and to be here. Been away the last week. And, uh, I've been a little bit nervous this morning. Um, <laughs> I believe the Holy Spirit told me to talk about healing this morning. A little chat with George before meeting. Oh, yeah. Just said goodbye to Harold. Um, but we said, well, he's run his race. Yeah, he's run his race. My dad, seven years ago, ran his race. And um, so I battled a bit preparing this. I thought, oh, Lord, can it wait a few more weeks? But uh, he wants, I really believe in all my heart, he wants you to hear this morning about healing and about authority. And uh, I'm going to speak, I'm going to share a shortish, very, very basic sermon. And then, Dave doesn't mind, we're going we're to do some praying at the end. And we're going to take authority over any um, ailments in our lives or any situations. We're going to take authority because we have the authority. And um, I'll explain that in a few moments. So let's take courage. Take courage because I believe that this church is going to be widely known as a church where people get healed. Where people's lives are transformed by the power of God. I just come back from a conference in Sheffield, and wow, I know that I know conferences. It's a bit, um, you know, the challenge is to come back and keep what you've received, and to stay, and to maintain, maintain uh, what you've received. And I've been to a lot of conferences, and that's that can be difficult, um, but uh, all things are possible. <laughs> So um, I've been to a conference where I've, uh, I've heard it's, it's from an organisation called Catch the Fire and uh, all around the world they're sending teams into various countries around the world and I tell you what, revival is breaking out all over the world, predominantly in um, developing nations, in poorer nations. But I want to tell you that incredible things are occurring around the world. Tens of thousands of people are being saved every day. Believe it or not, Iran is, is experiencing a tremendous revival at the moment. Really tremendous. And um, China, I can rattle off a number of nations, and uh, oh God, please God, let it happen here. Right. Let it happen in the UK, and I believe it's going to happen here, and it's going to happen in the UK. It's going to happen in our town. And I heard the stories about teams being sent out to these nations, and 90%, and you know, I think, I believe it's going to be 100%, 90% of people receiving prayer for healing are getting healed. And I'm not talking about headaches. I'm not talking about, you know, my, I'm talking about the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, no, the paralyzed no. walking. No. I'm, we are ta I'm talking about serious, serious, major healings of people's <laughs> lives being completely turned upside down. And it is it's just such a blessing to hear what's going on around the world. They, the, the, the teams were saying, though, um, and it's, uh, I guess we can have our own conclusions about this. In the Western nations and the, and the, and the developed nations, it's about 30%. I think, well, could it be because of doctors are freely available? Could it be because of materialism? We don't know, but you know, let's pray that that 30% goes up to 100% all over the world because Jesus Christ, he has the authority, and I'm gonna share this morning, we have the same authority that Jesus has. Authority over sickness. Authority over strongholds. You all know that I've had a bad back for four years. And um, whenever I stop work and have a week off, a few weeks off, it starts to seize up. My back seems to love movement and, you know, movement, movement, movement. It's almost like it's getting oiled. And whenever I have to take time off work, my back starts to seize up and get painful, more painful. And by the time I got to Wednesday, I was in a lot of pain with my back, and I was getting, oh, oh, you know, and uh, it started to make me feel, oh, I can't do this. And do you know what, I walked to the corner of the auditorium, and I took authority over my back pain, and I went and sat down, and I sat down all day without any pain, and the next day, I sat down all day without, I've not sat down for more than half an hour in a chair for four years, roughly half an hour, no pain. And, um, wow, and there's a few little twinges still, but I tell you, God has done something there. And um, there was people <laughs> all around the place touched by God's healing power. And this is normal, authentic Christianity. 
the things we've been hearing about around the world, about people be, be being healed, eyes popping out and ears being opened and people coming out of wheelchairs. This is the authentic, normal Christianity that we're called to flow in. And if we're not experiencing the miracles and the healings and the signs and wonders, then it's not the normal stuff. The book of Acts, that's it. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's the church we're called to be. And there are those people that are recorded in the book of Acts because they acted on the word of God. And that's God's gentle challenge to us to act on the word of God. And healing and deliverance being a normal and expected occurrence. Whenever Christians are gathered together, there should be healing and there should be deliverance. And there should be people's lives transformed, people saved. Because Jesus Christ has all authority from heaven. And we are one with Christ. Therefore, we have the authority. And we must know and be confident in the authority that he has given us. Um, last time I spoke, I think Pastor Dave was away. And um, I thought I started little, just a little series to intertwine about the four square gospel lights. About Jesus the Saviour, Jesus the healer, healer, healer. Jesus the baptizer and Jesus the coming king. So I preached on Jesus the Savior some weeks ago. So today I'm talking about Jesus the healer. And it's such a massive, massive subject. And I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, you know, I've only got three pages of notes. I'm not going about five. So it's probably going to be a shorter sermon. It's one I'll get a time for prayer at the end. But we'll see. It's not, it's not always worked that way. Sometimes I can have two pages of notes and speak for longer. So we'll see. But I really believe that God wants us all to take courage and believe that it is His will that we see His miraculous healing power working amongst us. Amen? Amen. Do you believe it's His will? That's right. And as we learn to confidently use the gift of healing, indeed all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we will see people impacted with the power of God. We will see our town impacted with the power of God. It's December, and my kids are giving me lists of things they want for Christmas. And you wouldn't believe, well, you would believe the things I'm getting. Laptops, iPads, Blackberries, you know, and I think, hang on a minute. Santa Claus has been hit by the world recession. I'm Santa Claus. But um, they want all these gadgets. And of course, well, you know, there is a budget. But you know, when you give somebody a computer, Let's just say that you all receive a computer for Christmas. You'll have to learn how to use that computer, won't you? And if, and if you're under the age of 10, you'll learn immediately, within a day, how to use it. But what I'm trying to say is, the gifts of the Holy Spirit have already been given to you. You have received every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3. You have already been given every spiritual blessing. We need to learn to use the gifts that have already been given to us, me included. And I've, I've, I've allowed things to get a bit rusty. We've got to learn to use the gifts God's given us. We must have confidence. We must have courage. We must deal with fear. And we must flow in the gifts that God has given to us. So I'm just, just a few very brief, simple words, verses about God's will to heal, our authority in Christ, and our oneness with Christ. First of all, God's will to heal. I believe, after being in pain for four years, um, I, I, you know, and not waiting for a healing and having people, we must, to receive a healing, if we are to confidently receive a healing or pray for healing to somebody else, we must believe that it's God's will to happen now. Not, happen, not stay, begin your prayer with the word if, if it is thy will. Um, I, don't, I don't accept that. And what's happened is, what I believe is something, people and Christians, and I've done it myself, I've done it, have developed a false theology that it's not God's will to heal me. He'll do it in the future. It's, I know, maybe in five years time, or maybe next year, I'll be healed. And I've got to learn to deal with this thorn in the flesh, and I've got to learn to, I've got, got to, learn to live with this pain. <coughs> And I, re I reject that now, and every day I've been believing it's God's will to heal me now. 
And I love the story of the ten lepers in Luke 17 because ten lepers, Jesus was approached by ten lepers and he, you know, they said, Lord, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they turned to show themselves to the priests, they were healed. <coughs> now he didn't say to four of the lepers, go and show yourself to the priests. Now the other six, you have to wait another year. You have to wait, you know, five years or you two have to wait ten years and learn patience and learn humility and blah, 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 blah. They were all healed. And that was the end of it. We must believe that it's God's will to happen now. And if you're listening to this now and you have a physical problem, you need healing, please, I'd like you please to believe that it's, your, it's God's will to heal you now. Not next week, not next month, not next year, now. Let me turn to a few texts. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew 4, 23. Matthew, Matthew, 4.23. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing some kinds of sickness, all kinds of sickness, and all kinds of disease among the people. That's Matthew 4.23. And then in Luke 4.40, there's a similar account in Luke 4.40. Luke 4.40. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. So, it's God's will to heal, God's will to heal now, it's God's will to heal whatever needs healing. Our authority in Christ. Let's, let's share a bit about our authority in Christ. Now, you, a lot of you know me very well, and you may know that in 1992 I had a, <laughs> to 1993, I had a brief spell in the police force. Pretty brief. But I keep, I don't know whether sometimes I, I dream about this job I used to have 20 years ago. I mean, I only had it for seven, seven months. But um, the Lord taught me a lesson through this job. I'm going to hear the inevitable story that James likes to tell you. As a kid, of course, as a kid, I fancied the idea of being a policeman. My brother David, I watched him, you know, and he's, oh, yes, he might quite a good job. Um, I was being redundant for my job in Aria Valley as an electrician. So I applied, and I, 2,000 applied, and I got one of the jobs. I think there were 40 posts, and I got one of the posts. And there it was, months later, in my uniform. Carrying out door-to-door -door inquiries. And I remember, I had no confidence in myself. I was 22 years old, and I had no confidence in myself. I was a nervous wreck. And whenever I was dealing with the public, making arrests and directing traffic, I was nervous, and I had no confidence. And I had been given authority by Her Majesty the Queen. I had been given the authority to carry out my duties but I lacked confidence, and people noticed it. Offenders noticed it. You know where this is going, don't you? I don't have to. Therefore, they, they lacked respect for me. Like the lad I arrested in Woolworths. And I walked in through town to the station and got lost. And had to ask him where the station was. It's an old classic, 20 years old. But I actually didn't ask him. I shouted out loud, Where's the Nick? I was trying to get away. There's coming to know it. Right, come on, I'll show you. <laughs> Weeks later, I resigned. <laughs> the sergeant would tell him he had a field day with me. God has challenged me that back then I was not confident enough in the authority I had been given. And furthermore, as a church, um, yeah, as, a, as individual Christians, we can lack confidence in the authority that God's given us through Christ. So what I'm trying to say through this story, funny story really, is that this authority that's been given to us as Christians, 
We need to be confident in our use of this authority to break strongholds and to bring healing. And just as a nervous, fearful policeman will not command respect, neither will a nervous, fearful Christian command the respect of demonic strongholds which have bound people up. Because whenever people saw me, and they'd go, oh, the policeman, oh, I better watch myself now. And whenever the devil sees you, Christian, I'm sure he probably says, whoa, a Christian, I'd better watch out now. Right. But then when he notices that you're not confident in your authority, well, yeah, well you don't have his respect. And he's not going to answer your prayers. He's, you know, he's not going to let go. He's, he's going to fight. Jesus gave his disciples authority to heal every kind of disease. And those disciples, they weren't policemen, they didn't wear a uniform, their uniform was Jesus Christ. They carried the authority of Jesus Christ. And you carry the authority of Jesus Christ. Let's just read for a few texts regarding this. Matthew 10 verse 1. Matthew 10 1. When he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. He gave that to his disciples. He gave them power. What's it say in verse 7 of Matthew chapter 10? Jesus said, As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Over in Luke 9, Forgive me if I'm going too quickly, I often do. Luke 9, <coughs> verse 1 to 2. 1 to 2. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Just another couple of texts. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. Jesus said to his disciples, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything, all we've got to do is believe. Only believe. Those are the words of Withersworth in his ministry. Only believe. And look at this verse in Matthew 28, the last one, and the last one for, for, the, for the moment. Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And what did he say to his disciples? He said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now how much is left for the devil then? If Jesus Christ has been given all authority, how much is left for the devil? Zero. And now, just very briefly, before I finish, I, want to, I just want to remind you all that you are one with Christ. And if you are one with Christ and he has all the authority, then that means that you also have the authority. You have all authority because you are one with him. I've already touched on Ephesians 1.3, which I didn't read out. But he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ. <coughs> you are one with him. You have an open heaven. You are one with Christ. Just a few, just a couple more verses before I end. Colossians 3, 3. Paul says, you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And the last verse I'm probably going to mention this morning is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Which says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 
So, Simon, what are you on about this morning? Well, I believe it's God's will to heal now, <coughs> right this moment. If we need healing, just believe and have faith that it's God's will to heal you now. Jesus Christ has all authority. He's given, he gave it to his disciples, and he's given it to you and to me, Christian. All authority is yours. You are one with Christ. If you believe that you're one with Christ, you are one with Christ. And nothing can separate you from him. You are one with Christ. That means you've got all the authority. So what I'd like to do for, for you know, just for the next few minutes, if it's okay, I would like us all now to take authority over any sickness in our bodies. I'd like us to take authority. It doesn't have to be sickness. It can be some, maybe you need a financial miracle. Maybe you need a miracle in some other area. But if you've got all the authority, let's be confident. Let's be courageous. Let us step forward knowing we've got the authority and we're going to use it right now. It's time to get righteously angry. Don't want to blow me on trivia, but I was angry on Wednesday morning about my back pain. I was really angry. I took authority over it. I swear I'm not having this. I take authority over this back pain right now in the name of Jesus. Didn't think anything of it. I didn't feel a laser beam hit me. When I sat down in my chair, I had absolutely no pain the whole day. And that's for me, after four, you know, four years with a back problem, um, I've not been able to do that. But, you know. So, let's have that confidence about us. Okay, well, what I'd like to do is, I don't know whether something, some soft, soaking music can be played, Paul, or, or whether something can be played. Yeah, let's, uh, let's spend a few minutes waiting on, waiting on the Lord, and um, I would like us to pray. I would like us to take authority. <coughs>